Today, we're going to discuss non-surgical facelifts, a term commonly searched on the internet and searched over 7,000 times a, a month uh, on Google. We're going to go through each one of these non-surgical treatments in order for you to be better informed so that you have a understanding of the pros and the cons of what each procedure can offer. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Joel Kopelman. I'm a facial plastic surgeon and I've been doing surgical and non-surgical uh, enhancements for the last 30 years. Let's first clarify that non-surgical facelift is really a misnomer and is not a facelift. A facelift is a long-lasting, more invasive procedure, obviously. However, these non-surgical treatments, and I like to call them treatments, do have great value in enhancing someone's appearance. And for some patients who don't want to have surgery for whatever reason, whether they're, they're not inclined to have surgery, whether they have medical problems that preclude surgery, uh, these are certainly legitimate entry-level enhancers that have effective, it's an effective methods to uh, in, improve volume, improve the texture of your skin, uh, improve some modest lifting of your skin, and, and some laxity of your skin. They do have value in and of themselves. I'm gonna go through each category to clarify what the pros and the cons of each one of these uh, procedures are and I hope you uh, find it to be value. These are the four things that can be uh, addressed with non-surgical facelifting techniques. Volume, laxity, lifting, and skin texture. Let's start with volume. As we age, we tend to lose volume, and this volume can enhance your cheeks or around your mouth or even your jawline uh, or your temples with uh, injectables like hyaluronic acid gels. Of course, hyaluronic acid gels are very well tolerated in most cases. There's a very low incidence of allergies and they're reversible. That's the good news. The bad news is that they don't last very long. They can only last between six months and 18 months at max. The second category in volume replacement would be Sculptra. And Sculptra is really not a filler, it's really a biostimulant. And uh, it comes in a powder form and, and we mix it and inject it beneath the skin and it stimulates collagen and it enhances uh, volume by stimulating collagen deposition below, below the skin. And it can be very helpful and very efficacious in patients who particularly lose peripheral volume loss in, the, in their face. However, uh, again, it only has a limited lifespan of two to max three years. And there are, could be some problems with sculpture, meaning it, you, you can form nodules if it's, if it's not diluted properly and so forth. The third category in volume replacement would be fat grafting. And fat grafting, of course, requires a, a relatively minor surgical procedure of, of obtaining fat from around your belly or your hip but there's some recovery and some risk associated with, with uh, liposuction and fat grafting itself. The next category, of course, is laxity and, and microneedling with radio frequency is, is one device that we use. And it can be very effective in terms of improving skin quality and, and tightening the skin. But there's other devices like all therapy, which penetrate uh, deep within the dermis and heat up the dermis and stimulate collagen that can tighten the skin as well. And then soft wave, which is now, uh, is not as painful as all therapy, but is also billed to lift the, the brow and the neck. I don't believe these, these devices have much longevity in terms of their lifting uh, potential. They may lift very temporarily or make your skin look a little tighter but I don't think they have long lasting ability to, to raise and, and lift uh, deep tissues on the face like a facelift would. There is one other thing I wanna point out about these deep ultrasonic dermal heat treatments, and that is they've been known to cause some facial atrophy 
in the areas that people have been treated. So actually it can be a detriment to have these treatments. It's not always a benign treatment in and of itself. The third category is, is lifting and these non-surgical facelift uh, quote unquote techniques are supposed to be a effective ways to lift the face. Botox is one example. You can, you can inject Botox here and out here and raise the brow modestly, but it's not going to give you the effect of, of, of doing a, a brow lift, uh, which is a more permanent elevation of your brow. It'll temporarily raise your brow in some cases. Threading is another example uh, where people use what's called PDO threads. And again, these threads are woven beneath the skin. Uh, they're pulled back. Uh, they can cause rippling of the skin. They can protrude through the skin. I'm not a big fan of PDO threads. I, frankly, uh, I've been offered uh, to use them by, the, by various companies, but I refuse to use them. They've gone through many iterations and they continue to cause the same uh, problems. And above all, they only last a year or so or less in terms of their effectiveness to raise the, uh, the tissues. So they really are not effective raising, elevating uh, techniques. The fourth category is skin texture improvement or wrinkle improvement. And in this category, we typically use lasers. For superficial lasering, we use erbium glass lasers like Fraxel lasers, which are fractionated light beams there's very rapid recovery from these treatments, and therefore it's uh, very popular amongst many patients. However, the long-term benefit from these superficial lasers is always questionable. In other words, it may only last a year or two, but if you want a longer lasting effect from a laser, you probably have to use a deeper treating laser like a CO2 laser which penetrates through the skin at a deeper layer and delivers heat deeper to the, to the superficial layers of the skin. The downside of a deeper treatment, however, is a longer recuperation. And that means the skin can stay inflamed and uh, pink for several weeks following the procedure. And even there can be some depigmentation and lightening of your skin from these deeper lasers because it affects what's called the melanocytes, which are the pigmented cells of your, of your face. So there are pros and cons, obviously, of the types of lasers we use. But again, they could be very uh, important in terms of enhancing your facial features without undergoing uh, invasive surgery. We also use occasionally chemical peels. Some patients prefer to have chemical peels and they come in all different strengths as well, glycolic peels and, and all the way up to what's called phenol peels. But the phenol peels that penetrate deep, again, depigment the skin. And uh, there's some uh, significant side effects from using those types of peels. So they've fallen out of favor. So we've reviewed all of the different non-surgical um, face, quote unquote, facelifting uh, techniques. And I hope you recognize that there are some uh, techniques that are very valuable and can enhance your appearance. Yes, they can't necessarily lift your face upward like a, a true facelift procedure, but they do enhance your appearance and are, are of value. There are procedures though that I do think you should uh, steer clear of. I think that these deep ultrasonic treatments uh, like all therapy can precipitate some uh, untoward effects like atrophy in the areas they are, are treated. I also think that PDO threads uh, should not be on your uh, wavelength because they uh, can cause significant uh, problems like infections and spitting and uh, they can extrude and cause issues and they only last a short period of time. So I don't think it's worth the risks uh, to have those procedures performed. If you have any further questions regarding non-surgical cosmetic treatments on the face, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Please leave them below. Please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you again in my next video.